Welcome back. You're still watching Breakfast Central. Now you're on to Trend Wave. Now several reactions have been trailing the social media streets in Uganda as an enforcement officer, CPL Corporal Ogwal Yiko, was filmed pepper spraying journalists as they covered the arrest of pre-medical interns who attempted to march to parliament to protest the delayed commencement of medical internship. In a trending video, Corporal Ogwal was directed by his superior to tear gas and spray the protesters to send them off the protest ground. Let's take a look. Of course, now, now the officer in question has issued an apology to the journalist, but still remains suspended and has been handed over to the Professional Standards Unit for further investigation. The question Ugandans are asking is, why aren't the Ugandan authorities saying anything about the senior officer that instructed Corporal Ogwo to spray the pepper spray brought to book, or is it beyond persecution? Well, let's see how people are reacting to this right now. That is a comment from Thomas Kitimbo. Thomas says, Ugandan police, we appreciate for this response, but what about Afande Kamuya, who commanded Corporal Ogwo? And, he, and uses the hashtag NBS updates. More reactions to this story. Stefan says the question is, was the corporal acting without orders from his superiors? The answer is most likely no. However, in a game of chess, the pawns must always be sacrificed for a winning strategy. But who is the winner here? That's a big question from Stefan. Esab says, who is buying those sprays to police? They are for what reason? Where, when, and how are they supposed to be used? And who is supposed to use them? That's a big question also from Artsap. Uh, we'll see if we can take one more reaction to this story. Benjamin says, journalists should go after them on an individual basis than relying on disciplinary actions from such institutions, which are in most cases a sham. This will serve as examples to others to act diligently and within the confines of the law. But let's move on now to Kenya, where controversial Kenyan musician and businesswoman Esther Akoth, popularly known as Akothi, has been a subject of internet of the internet as she's officially off the market again for the seventh time after she tied the knot with her husband Dennis Schweizer, a Swiss man. Now this wedding was held on her birthday, which happened to be on Easter Monday, as she turned 40 years of age. Now, the colorful ceremony held at Winsault Hotel in Nairobi and was attended by several dignitaries, including Kisumu First Lady Dorothy Nyongo, Migori Governor's wife Agnes Ayako, the Gender, gender Cap Cabinet Secretary Aisha Jumwa, and many other dignitaries. Let's take a look at that lovely video of the wedding, which you can see on the street. But of course, the social media streets, they have a lot to say. Especially with the fact that she has had five children in her previous marriages and now this is her seventh marriage. Let's take a look at some of the reactions. Well, that's, that's, that's what is trending. We'll take a look at some of the reactions very quickly. But I want to bring you, Olive, into this story. This is quite an interesting story, right? Interesting I mean, one, Liz. Right. Very. You I mean, see seven, <laughs> the seventh marriage. A firm reminder of a song that says, at first, if you don't succeed, dust yourself up and try, and try again. again. She took it quite literally. Uh, but I think another, another aspect to look at it from would be the fact that she's someone who, who doesn't give up on love. I'm hoping that the seventh time is a charm and that she looks yes. at the past six ones and sees whatever lessons. Some people just have it unlucky in life or luck in love. You know, but with every time that they get it wrong, they still have the courage to try again. So I'd like to see the positive angle and applaud her for the courage to try again. I, I love where you're bringing it from, but some people are also talking about the fact that when did she start getting married? Because if she's just turning 40 now and she's had six marriages, this is the seventh one. When did she start? I'm saying, well, let me shock you. It could be just every yesterday, year. Mm -hmm. I saw a trending clip on Instagram and I went through the comment section. It was one of someone who just got married and she was trying to encourage other people who were looking to get married. And I was just reading the com comments of women there. And one woman who is 30 says, She's 30, she's been through five marriages and five divorces, and she's still trusting for love. And I was just like, at what point did she start getting married? It's very interesting. So many dynamics to this, but at the end of the day, everyone, or at least many people want to feel love and would stop at nothing until they find the love of their life. I mean, it also reminds me of J-Lo, reminds me of Lori Harvey, you know, the Lori Harvey. Uh, no, 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 please, let's not bring Lori Harvey into this. I don't know why. Lori Harvey is just a normal, regular girl that is into relationships. It doesn't work out. She breaks up. She moves on. Some people have dated more, more men than Lori Harvey has. 
but for some reason they've decided to make her that symbol of um, dating and walking away. She's just a young woman who's trying to find love and find her peace. But because I, I think she's also eye. one of the people that get over relationships easily because it's always about. I mean, what we're talking life. about is the is the time <laughs> is the time in between. I just think she she's such a public figure, one. and people just like to sensationalize news and stories. So when one or two, three people have said the same thing, others jump on it as well. So. <laughs> and that's, that's what I think it is. But that's an interesting story, Liz. Right. And then also for the other story, the Ugandan jo journalist uh, yes. that was called out for pepper spraying... Um, the police. The, the policeman that was called out for pepper spraying a journalist. Now people are saying, what about the superior who asked him to do this? Why isn't there anything being done? Why is there no... Uh, why are they not calling this person out also? Why is it just this... Um, the, the, the this, this one who, who yeah. is now the pawn in this situation. And I think this just mirrors what happens every other day. In, in every other sector, not just in the police sector. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody does it, uh, somebody does an action, uh, mm -hmm. the, takes the fall for it, but they had a superior that they had to report to. So of what course. happens to the superior? Of Thank course. you so much, um, Liz, for sharing this. I mean, it's very interesting that you shared the stories. The police have come out to apologize, and I do hope that Going forward, we don't see a repeat of such incidences. Certainly, certainly.